Sh -sh Shishina! Uh -huh. Hello? Hello? Is it recording? <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, wow! Oh my god, hello! <gasps> For the sixth time? <laughs> Let me just... <laughs> oh, I have so much trouble recording intros. Anyway, hi! Um... As you can see here, and in the title, probably, we're gonna be playing The Hazy Night! It's a visual novel, mainly produced by one person, Maxi Molina, that follows the story of Adder, a one-eyed farm boy who dreams of becoming a knight! It's literally, it's literally got my heart. The characters, the story, the dynamics, the everything, and oh my god, I'm so excited that this is really out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll disclose this now, as you'll definitely hear it later, but I voiced the character Lynn. I bought the game on Steam because I'm cool like that, and you should too if you want to get a different ending than me or just immerse yourself in your own playthrough. But I also wanted to let you know that there's a free demo out on the itch.io page which has chapters 1 and 2, but no Lynn content. <laughs> you're here for Lynn, right? Because you're, you're here for Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm also gonna let you know that, um, volume warning, like, randomly throughout the playthrough, I, 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 I scream a lot, because I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Oh, wow, the menu, the menu, the menu! <laughs> okay, well, uh, I still have more to talk about, because, because <laughs> I'm like that. Anyway, I played through the demo about half a year ago, so I know the gist of the main story in the first two chapters. But now is a real perfect time for a refresher, and there's been a ton of updates and new additions since then that I'm really excited to experience for the first time, and that's what we'll do together! Now, there is a lot of lore behind this universe, and the game has an encyclopedia function to give more context on the things the characters say and the world they live in. So, I made a different video reading up on all the terms you might want to be in the know of, and you can reference that if there's something you get confused on. Possibly. Maybe. It's it's already uploaded. I'm just, just letting you know that's there, because I'm cool like that. Okay, now I'll scroll through the credits! Hee hee hee! Look! The Hazy Night version 1.5.01! Cool! Original story and characters, art, writing, and programming by... Sandra Molina Hwanagi, Maxi Molina Aki, Sandra MJ Jeff! You're so cool. You're so cool. Well, Patreon exists. French translation by Benjamin. Oh, you go, you go. Spanish translation by SMJ and Alejandro. Oh, you go, you go, you go. Voice direction and casting by SMJ. Oh, wow! Look at these cool voice actors. So cool. So wow. Wow. Whoa. So many. Audio engineers. Oh, you're so cool. Look at these consultants. Look at this music. Whoa! Sound effects? Oh, you're so epic. Look at these special things! Look at these patrons! Oh my gosh, they're so cool. They're so cool. Now that's all I have to say for this intro. Now let me just like cut to where... <laughs> let me just stop and cut to where I actually started playing, probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're starting whatever! <laughs> okay. This version includes up to chapter 3. Updated designs all over the place and several new scenes and rewrites in the first chapters. Anything displayed is subject to change in the later versions. As always, keep up with development on my Twitter account. <laughs> go follow, go follow. <laughs> go follow. <laughs> Holy horns! <laughs> <laughs> What's up with this place? It's ancient. Are you sure we are allowed to be here? No. I'm you're allowed to be anywhere as long as no one finds you. <laughs> no, me saying this is weird. Me advising the narrator is weird. <laughs> okay, okay. Sneaking through forgotten cracks in a wall is not as easy as it once was, but I still managed to push my hat and my staff in somehow without wrecking the wall any further. Today's a mess. And the last thing I'd want is the whole city knowing that I'm back on my nonsense. Namely, helping Fawns trespass into abandoned temples in pursuit of fixing the written lies that pass as history these days. 
Okay, so so we are we are we are the narrator. We are the narrator. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me just let me just let me just dial myself down like sixty nine notches. I didn't mean to say sixty nine. I meant that unironically, but okay. I'm too old for this rubbish. I catch a glimpse of Lynn's expression. Lynn? That's Lynn. <laughs> okay. Lynn's expression as I push my scarf over my face again. My newest headache looks entirely unconvinced by my logic. Look, we're already here and you're going to need all the help you can get, kid. I don't have time to explain every single little thing to you. If, <laughs> if said kid still has any qualms left about following me here, she has the rare decency not to voice them. I mean, this whole ordeal is her fault in a very roundabout sort of way. Still her fault nonetheless. <laughs> it's anyone's but mine, at least. I didn't come all the way back to the city to do charity for his descendants. Oh, who's his? Who's his? Oh, I don't know who his is. I just wanted to find that dumbass's grave and clean up a little or leave some in sense or something not 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 not, not this oh i can't i can't my heart my heart my... thank you alarm i wasn't looking to hear legends about any so-called knight of the upper field i know the books in this library won't say a word about him but i had to come back to this place anyway the unlikely possibility of finding a trace of his existence among the broken tablets and burnt cod cod codices. I know how to I know how to pronounce words. Okay, <laughs> was far too compelling to ignore. Here I am, still following in his footsteps, like the few unlucky scripts that Time and Thieves spared, frozen in their shelves as they await the return of someone who will understand them. We have a lot in common, this library and I. <laughs> the kid's eyes open a fraction wider and I only managed to narrowly avoid the incoming onslaught of questions. Care, ink, paper, you can write, right? Of course! <laughs> You're talking to the fastest! Shut it, ask it, ask it! <laughs> Sheesh, you're really adding some flavor to my name, huh? Where did all that salt come from? Or... Could that be the sweetness of an old flame leaving such a bitter aftertaste? <laughs> yes! Yes! Ew! No, don't do that. It makes you sound like your mother. Her mother! Her mother! I mean, her mother. Or her great, great, great grandmother? I can't believe the story has derailed this much! How long have I been gone? I can't even start to guess if you won't tell me how old you are. Okay, I had to pause it for a second, but... <clears throat> Alright. <sighs> okay, I can't stop, like, I, I can't... I can't stop me being excited. I I must. But also, me being narrator... <laughs> okay! Okay. I'm entirely too old to care about something as dumb as numbers. Well, gee, I'm starting to see why you wanted me here. Do you have a name, or are you too cool for letters, too? <laughs> well, I do have a name. My name would only doom this project. You will be me, and I will be nothing more than the space between words. That's so deep. <laughs> so <laughs> what a droll way to say you want me getting lynched for this. I, I can still keep the story to myself and tell you to get lost, kid. But you won't, because after hearing my name, you realize I'm the chosen gazelle that Legend of Old Prophesied would tell the true story of the night, right? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could use a little encouragement here, not gonna lie. Listen, Lynn, I don't believe in chosen ones, and I certainly don't know what the truth is. I doubt Ader... Ader himself... Oh my god, I forgot how to pronounce... Don't kill me! I uh, will hear his name at some point in the game. <laughs> but I am going to tell you the story I know. I will tell it once, and I will probably tell it wrong since I can barely remember it anymore. 
But even so, anything I say will be a thousand times more accurate than any of the odes in this witless bunch of fob do- FOB DO- <laughs> Sorry, I've been singing through the ages. This may be- I think it's Adder. I'm gonna bet. It's a- eight, Adder. Out, out of the two, Adder or Adder, I'm gonna bet it's Adder. I shouldn't be- I, sh I shouldn't be hung up on this. <laughs> Punishment for lying wait for lying his way into history, but I still can't let the name of a friend be smeared like that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so what I mean to say is that I will skewer you if you interrupt me and make me forget something. Fair. <laughs> she finally shuts up for a moment, though I know the silence won't last. Right, good. I guess I should put my own thoughts in order before we begin. His story started back when he left his village to... Now, now that would be too long. His story starts when he became a knight, and ugh, that defeats the point. I, I guess, I, his story, well, I, I guess his story starts with me. I could allow myself that much merit, right? Who are you again? <laughs> I'm the one who tells the story. You right. <sighs> okay, all right, here we go. Chapter one. <laughs> I need to stop. Okay, I need to stop. <laughs> Chapter one. Chapter one. The Fickle Queen. Or, what a better way to start the story than when things are about to go south. Did I skip something? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Adder. I was right! <laughs> hey, lad. Dare, dare. Do we have to go through this every single fuck? No! <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. We've unlocked the Cyclopedia! Oh, wait. I'm gonna save, I guess. Because I can. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Okay, uh. <laughs> Earlier I skipped ahead because. Because I wanted to. I, I wanted to, um, what's it called? What I wanted to do was, uh, l look, l was, was read all of the encyclopedia entries before doing any gameplay stuff, but you have to unlock the entries. And so now I accidentally unlocked these three <laughs> as I was skipping through it. <clears throat> But I'm going to read all of them. I'm going to read all of the encyclopedia entries that are unlocked because Yeah, sue me. Is this in the Is this in the Oh! Oh! Okay, 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 <clears throat> okay, I get it, okay, 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 I'm gonna pause this stream, no, no, not stream, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this recording, and then I'm going to read, <laughs> I'm gonna read all, all the, um, I'm gonna read everything. A beast! Ah, outer and Kyoff's entries unlocked. Ah, beast, a beast, a beast. Okay, <laughs> I'll read them. Okay, I'll read them out. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you, see, well, these, well, this one's unlocked because I, I was a fool. Okay, I was, I was a fool and, and thought that all of them would be unlocked. But that doesn't matter. We're gonna read out adders. <clears throat> Adders and Adder, son of Grafaz of the Upperfield. Age, old enough to drink in this tavern, Miss Barkeep. Species, Roe Deer. Birthplace, <laughs> Adder, short neck. Leave me be! Adder, long neck, short horns, or Adder, shovel hands. Sometimes Adder, shoe face, is just a bumpkin with a long name and longer hands who left his tiny village to move to the great city of Heirloom. 
No one quite knows why, but he arrived with a single objective in mind, becoming a knight. But he's a peasant and pretty damn poor at that. Oh well, that's not gonna stop him, is it? Well, it, it kinda is. Dreams aren't edible after all. Lives in Slander District with his self-proclaimed best friend, Gyof. <laughs> Gyof, son of Igai, honeyed voice. Age? Guess. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, species, Ekane Deer. Birthplace, Heirloom. Gyof is, as he will make sure to tell you at some point or another, be it relevant or not, the son of Igai, a famous troubadour that wandered through Akazor playing in the most important palaces. All that Igai left for Gyof was his voice and his debts, however. He claims to be Adder's only friend and supporter in his quest to become a knight. A claim that is questionable at best and dubious at most. Bad at drinking, bad at playing, a bad influence, and a bad friend. But hey, he lets Adder live for free with him in his old rundown house in Slender District. Oh, yo! <laughs> These sketches! Oh! Let me look at this again. Ah! <laughs> okay, 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 okay! I saw a beast! Way to call me an eyesore. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I saw a beast. Right. Look, I'm not drunk enough for this, so good. This ain't no time to sleep. The beast may be gone, but the Mechadar is still out there. Mechadar! Ah, no! The forest out there has come to find me. And you stop screaming. I knew they could. No, I didn't do that. And you I knew they could. No, I didn't do and that. You stop screaming like an idiot. The forest out there. This ain't no time to sleep. The beast may be gone, but the Mechadar is still Mechadar. out there. Maybe I should have. I really should have like listened before I opened the encyclopedia. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I said Mega Death the whole freaking time. Ah! <laughs> the forest out there has come to find me. And you stop screaming like an idiot and use your brain for a second. <laughs> I knew they'd get to the city one night. We gotta tell everyone. There are no damn trees around you, dimwit! <laughs> a long shush followed right after. Or that's what we'll go with, since the words their dear neighbors used were too colorful to be reproduced. Oh, then what did you holler for, Mr. Bard? The sun ain't up yet. If you don't quit your whining, we're gonna get a beaten. Says you, the buck who hath been delighting mine ears with his pitiful wailing, all night long. <laughs> Say what? You've been talking in your sleep again. <laughs> well, it's... It, it really isn't his fault. It's not his fault. It's it's in involuntary... I know darn well when I'm dreaming, and that oh. <laughs> wasn't no dream. No, sir. But even if it was, it ain't like I could control my nightmares. Yeah, yeah. When you live with someone, you gotta take the good with the bad, you know? I know. <laughs> then give me a minute to reconsider if taking you in was really such a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Mr. Bard. Don't be ugly. Yeah, Mr. Bard. Don't be ugly. Who carries you home when you empty a barrel and you start to beeline? Me. <laughs> Who convinces Elagrab to let you out of the dungeon when you mess up and he catches you? It's your friend Shorthorns over here. <laughs> oh, he's so good. Because... We're friends, right? Yes! Yes! Tomodachi! My dear bumpkin, emotional <laughs> blackmail is hardly a fair tactic. Wait. Fair? Fair. Fair? Oh, three. Don't. The fire! <laughs> I spared a bite at kid. If you keep screaming, I'm going to kill you. Not if they get to me first! Oh, no! And so Adder's heavy hoofs stomped on the ground with the force of a stampede as he sprinted away, making Gyoff regret every decision that led him suffering this torment. I love them, I love them, I love them. Glad we sorted that out. I hope he's not late. Uh, I mean, I guess with the way that he... Bizarre! Wide awake now and running as fast as his clumsy hoofs could let him, Adder set off to the bazaar. Can I click it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> a whole year had... Oh! New! It says new! 
Oh, okay. A whole year had come and gone since he'd first set foot on the streets of Slander District, the most infamous slums of the capital. Wait, maybe I should have read this first. Ooh. I read these. I read these. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna read uh, these these entries. The Knight of the Upper Field, Addison of Asgadath, Knight of the Upper Field. H? <laughs> Species Row Deer, Birthplace. <laughs> Akazor's most beloved hero knight, who also happens to be Akazor's most disputed character. Who was he? What business did he have in the great city of Heirloom? How did he climb his way to fame? Did he really slay a beast? Why did he never wield a sword? Who were his allies? Who were his foes? It would all be rather clearer if the protagonist of these tales hadn't spent half of his life exaggerating exaggerating just about every single thing he did. And so, locations, Heirloom District, Slander District. Located to the northeast of Heirloom, Slander District is, simply put, a hill full of cutthroat slums, where the standard laws of property and ownership need not apply. Before the war, it used to be a district populated by barhan researchers that seeked some peace far from the bazaar or anywhere mildly important, with the sole exception of the great old Temple of Hirab, from which only a gazelle statue remains intact. Okay, okay, okay. A place so heinous that walking there alone at night was considered a suicide attempt, a place where you were in your right to keep a house if you could outlast its previous owner. Where he'd once felt like a poor fawn fearing for his life, now he felt like a poor deer fearing for his life. But at least he actually knew his way around after such a long time avoiding brigands. We're not going to talk about if I pronounce that right or not. He had no time to spare worrying about trivial matters such as being robbed or stabbed for he fully well for he full for being robbed or stabbed for he knew fully well that he was for he knew fully well that he was to meet his destiny. <gasps> the page was gonna skin me alive! <laughs> no no no, he's late, he's late, he's late. A destiny which most likely didn't really include being flayed by his dearest employer. Though we can't rule out the possibility of his direct superior wagging him on the head for oversleeping on such an important date. <laughs> what if she hates me now? What if she hates you now? Then, Patron won't have no problem kicking me out. No, 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 you no. Kick me out. Keep us good as a payment. Oh no. No, that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dumb. But don't kill me anyway. Oh crap, 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 crap. So immersed was he in these fatalistic thoughts invading his head that his brain, which was, by all accounts, mostly made up of sawdust, didn't pay any mind to the path his hoofs were following. Oh! And so, as is to be expected from someone not heeding the wise advice, look where you're going, he soon met the first obstacle in his way to the plaza. Oh well. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> In any other place, that soft chuckle would have meant that Adder wouldn't have the benefit of living with his failures alone. In the slums, it could mean that he wouldn't have the benefit of living at all. <laughs> that was almost impressive. <gasps> what was it? What was it? I truly thought that you were going to run straight through that wall for a moment. <laughs> The voice got closer by the second, followed by a strangely harmonic tinkling. A melody that danced in his ears and paralyzed his mind, rendering him frozen in the spot at the thought of an incoming murderous lady. Adder shut his one remaining eye and held his breath deeply, knowing that it would be the last. Not, not dead yet. S still not dead? 
Alchemy was still alive. That's that's just rude. Between his blurry sight and the obfuscating darkness, Adder could barely teleport the silhouette standing right in front of him. He should have run and screamed and begged for his life, but instead... He hesitated long enough for a few stray sun rays to wander among the rundown houses, finally casting light upon his foe. Whoa! Ah! Ah! For your information, oh! everyone already oh! thinks that those are thick skulled. We don't need another martyr for the cause. <laughs> Adder's absolute lack of reaction made her mocking smile falter. To be fair, he had, indeed, left a sizable hole in the wall he just crashed against, but that was hardly the cause for his sudden drop in mental speed. Are you okay? <laughs> I mean, now that I met you! <laughs> Adder nodded, though he hadn't really heard the question. Sensing this, the mysterious lass extended a soft hand towards him in an amiable gesture. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I take your hand, I'd feel like a dunce. But if I play it cool, I could like be cool. But like, I already look not cool because I just ran into a wall, Adder. Yeah, what's there to lose? <laughs> I touch her. <laughs> What are those? What are what? I know they're short. Please don't stare. Oh, what kind of nonsense is that? I'd never seen hands like those before. <laughs> oh! My hands? You like my hands? Were you born with them? How much weight can you lift? Can you use tools at all? Or wear a shirt? What's wrong with your neck? Is that a hood or a <laughs> scarf? I love the pattern, by the way. Um. So. I'm sorry, ma'am. What was the question? Oh. You. What are you supposed to be? Oh. Well. Uh, I'm just your run-of-the-mill prairie buck, ma'am. Just, you know, my mom gave me shovels for hands and a gourd for a neck. They're better for work in the fields. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, come on. I want the actual story. Genetics! You... You want the born mess? Okay. See, I used to be all big and strong. But then I come to the city and... What do you know? Food ain't so easy to come by. I was so hungry that I'd even eat the rocks of the street. Oh. And I go to bed hungry one night. And another. And I keep on starving till I end up two meals short of turning into a walking pile of bones. Sipped. For my hands. <laughs> they just won't get. And they're for real heavy, let me tell you. He's so strong. So, that's the gist of it. You want to hear about my neck, too? Or my name, at least? The girl's eyes narrowed as she stared at Adder. He fixed his gaze on his hands, considering the strange path the conversation had taken. So, what you are saying is that you used to be plump? <laughs> B plump? Like fruit? Well... I used to eat a bunch of fruit before I came down here last year, yeah. Last year? Wait, how many eyes did you have then? How many? Five, I think. Five! Because I lost the other four. <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> Just the one, man. Oh. <laughs> I knew it. You've changed a lot, but it's you. You're that loudmouthed one-eyed chub. Oh. Say what? Yeah, say what? It's me. Don't tell me you've forgotten me. Oh, I remember! From playing the demo, which you should. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Gyof had warned Adder multiple times about the dangers of the It's Me scams, but he was pretty tempted to fall into this one. Ma'am, I don't know what you're selling, but I ain't gonna buy it. Yeah, he ain't gonna buy it. <laughs> Come on, don't you remember that night on the bridge under Hirab's statue? With the guards laughing at you? You didn't hit your head that hard, did you? No. I bet those guards had one haystack of a night laughing at some poor buck. I'm pretty darn sure that wasn't me. I'd remember you. Trust me. <laughs> it was a pretty long time ago, but... What? Wait, I know. 
what I'm eating. She bit her lip just long enough to make Adder lose his need to understand the situation anymore. Come closer. Okay! Who, <laughs> me? Almost asked the deer. Yet there was no one else hiding in the mists of dawn. I said come closer. All right then, here I come. <laughs> Okay. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't make me walk over there. <laughs> I'm scared! Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> That's close enough. She slipped right under Adder's arm. Uninvited, but not unwelcomed. Now, if you can. She's in the Um. <laughs> you know what? Maybe you should be a doctor after all. <laughs> oh my god, stop! Joseph, there you are! Ugh, give me a break. Yeah, give her a break. In less than a blink, her smile was back on her face as she turned to face the voice in the distance. It was some other doe in similarly flashy clothing, hurriedly stomping her way towards... Joseph, apparently. You call? We've been looking everywhere for you! <laughs> He's gone! He's gone! <laughs> oh my god. And so you found me. Oh, three. Congratulations. Now, if you don't mind... Miss Rochelle's had us searching for hours! She wants you back immediately! Hours?! <gasps> Why are you out so late, early? Many... hours? Well, I'm kind of busy, oh. so... Would you be so kind to go tell her to find someone else to bother while I catch up with my friend here? The fair's about to start! Head back already or you'll get us all in trouble! I want to fix my chair. Scooch! 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 The red-haired girl stood completely still. She held her breath for an instant. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Was that an order? Oh, Mama! What? I... Miss Rochelle said... Say, do you know what happened to the last wench who had the gall to order me around? No. Joseph's smile was still plastered on her face, but her eyes had narrowed down to a squint, sharpening her long eyelashes even further. I don't... Care to... find out? <gasps> The doll looking for her stammered, color drained from her mien. My mien? Nope, we're not, we're not gonna. After a few tense seconds, a pleased smile spread across Joseph's face. Come now, honey. Don't make that face. I'm just joking here. I've got too much going on as it is to begin picking fights with my sisters. Don't you think? Uh, <laughs> right. Then that's settled. Let's go. Jasif whipped, whipped, whipped. She whipped her braid as she turned around sharply, making the choir of bells that hung from her hips announce her leave. Adder had barely just a second to register what had happened. He could swear something had moved in a corner, but he couldn't care less. The finest lass he'd laid eyes upon his whole life was about to disappear, and she seemed to have forgotten all about him. Facing the prospect of never seeing her again, he tried at the very least to catch up to introduce himself formally. Wait, I... Ah! I'm sorry! Wow, 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 wow! Yes? But as Adder was about to speak, he had the same feeling of missing something. And so... Stop! And so, as his gaze drifted following her back once more, he noticed something else moving behind her dairy. Dairy... Dairy... Does that mean butt? Hold on. Derriere. Derriere. Derriere? Derriere? Euphemistic term of a person's buttocks! Something long, like a whip, ending on a red tuft of fur. Something that had most definitely didn't look like a servine tail. Confused, his eyes quickly traveled from the zone where her back lost its name to the top of her head. Praying, wishing, desperately hoping that he wouldn't find what he found sprouting from the top of her red head. Horns, coiled, black, 
Barhan horns, longer than his own rack. Adder had to hold back a yelp. He'd been so distracted by the rest of her features that... No way! No way! I wasn't looking at her! Adder yelled internally. Beads of sweat began... Wait, should I have said... No, okay. Beads of sweat began falling from his temples as his face became even more flustered. There's no way I... <laughs> But as if meaning to aggravate his inner turmoil, Shif smiled one last time with a mischievous glint in her eyes. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll see you around. You're so beautiful. Handsome. Ah! Adder was so, so many things. He was goofy, he was loud, he had a smile that could light up a whole town, he was gigantic. And yet, if there was a thing he'd never call himself, it was... No doubt. Handsome. After all, a buck's worth may may as well be as large as his horns are. And his horns were, well, tiny. Almost childlike. So that offhanded compliment, that mere insinuation that someone found him actually good looking made his heart flutter. And by flutter, I mean it may as well have birthed out of his chest right then. So, for just one second, he forgot that the lady in front of him was horned. For a moment, he forgot all the things he'd heard about gazelles. His face turned red, his jaw came loose, but had he been able to articulate, he'd have found he'd completely forgotten the ability to talk. He still knew how to do one thing, though. <laughs> Run! <sighs> <laughs> this time, his shame was stronger than the wall. Wait, what? Stop right there! What was that last bit? Yeah, what was that last bit? The bit about the wall or the gaz- Oh, I see. Ruminants haven't always been so successful at living together as they are now. Wars, gods, porn sheep, all the excuses to be different used to make a lot more sense to mortals back then. I know that, but there's no way the knight would have thought something so awful. Oh, 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 she's talking about how he didn't... Handsome. Adder was a young, insecure stag in a time when every row felt the need to deny having a single drop of Barhan blood in their veins. Why would he think any different? Why wouldn't he? That's the point, isn't it? That he was different from the rest? How could he believe any of that crap? <sighs> Oh my heart! It's in, it's in context now! It's in context! How should I know? I've never heard anything against gazelles. Oh, I've never had anything against gazelles. Sounds like you weren't a whole lot bothered by those who did, though. You're right. I wasn't. I just thought that there always had to be someone to punch down on, and I spent all my energy making sure that would never be me. That was the world as I saw it, and I never hoped it could be any different. Never wanted it to change. Okay, I got... <laughs> I paused the recording for a bit, and I got hot cocoa. So if I slurp... <laughs> Adder, though? I think he was never meant to do that to anyone. I think he just hadn't realized that there was more to the world than the fears he had been raised with. He had to butt heads with more than one type of wall in his life. I could be wrong, of course. His understanding could have been yet another pretense, and he may have very well lied about wanting to fight with the rest of us until his very last breath. <sighs> no. I'm sure he did grow to be a wise and kind man, Lynn. Much wiser and kinder than I ever was, at least. Neither of us would be here making excuses for the dumbass either. Otherwise! <laughs> well, I don't care about you, but he'd better rise up soon. I have high quality standards for my ancestors. Ancestors! 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 That means. That means he. <laughs> Oh my god, I remember freaking out as I was recording these. <laughs> and her saying ancestors meant that, that he 
reproduced with someone. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm glad you do, kid. Now, where were we? The sun was already up in the sky by the time Adder managed to remember that he was supposed to go to the bazaar. Otto. Oh, I'm so, so, so sorry. I didn't mean to arrive so late. Please don't The kill sun is up! Lo and behold, there was no one around. What do you know? <laughs> First again. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask for a raise at this oh, rate. Stop. Hold up. Now it's time for that. And he could get here at any... <laughs> Boss! Oh! <laughs> gotcha! He's You're gonna a gotcha! You're going to heart attack if you don't quit sneaking up on people like that, you know. <sighs> right. oh, don't you think for a second I forgot I was supposed to prepare the stall? <laughs> no, ma'am. But, you know, days are getting longer and it's... Harder to sleep at night, and uh, the streets are real crowded, and... Uh... Yeah. And a silent glare told him that he didn't have... Hey, job! Let me, like, not skip anymore. <laughs> and a silent glare told him that she didn't believe a single word. But she didn't care enough to pry, either. Hey, now! Quit giving me that look, Missy! You got here late, too. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that! Okay, Aina. To Aina! <clears throat> Known as Boss, a huge variety of insults related to her hair color. Age? No one actually counts to Aina with long hair! Species? Birth, please? Aina is quite simple. Simple, not in the sense of being simple minded. No, no. She just has her own priorities in life. Communicating is not one of them. Her father, the merchant, took great care in teaching her to write and read, but she prefers to spend her time doing more practical stuff, such as smashing things in her forge, or faces. I like that sound. <laughs> she pointed at her hair. Drops of silvery green water were dancing on her tips, painting the ground beneath them. How is it my fault that you were busy dyeing your hair? Dying! <laughs> Leaving him with that perfectly valid question unanswered, she walked back to pick up a big bag she'd left a few steps away. She lifted it up with a single hand and then headed towards the stall, closely followed by Adder. It was about time that they began working. <gasps> They're so beautiful. Maxie does such a good job. <coughs> Ah! <laughs> I swallowed my spit. A sudden thought popped up in Adder's mind as he helped her set up the carpet. So, uh, how come the patron ain't here? It just don't be the two of us today? Hmm. Aina simply shrugged. <laughs> you won't tell your pa I got too late, <laughs> right, boss? She punched his arm with such strength that she almost made him fall sideways. Ow! What did I... Oh. Oh, tail. Sorry, boss. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. This little reminder that that was a little sensitive issue effectively killed the conversation. People from all over Heirloom began congregating in the bazaar, turning the walled plaza into a sea of spice, trinkets, and deer. The currents of that sea were still difficult to understand for Adder, who often found himself pushed to the ground in the busiest hours. Today would be especially lively. It was the beginning of the Donsoon season, and so the festive Ekane had to make sure to bid a proper farewell to the rain cloud so they'd be back again by the end of it. It said new. No. <clears throat> oh, maybe that was for seasons, but that would make sense. A pleasant change from Adder's usual day-to-day, -day, working in Aina's forge under continuous risk of suffering a heat stroke or third-degree burns. Or that's what he thought at first. Welcome, welcome! We got the best prices in town! Really, really? Come on and see what goods we offer! There was no reaction whatsoever to his incessant yelling. <laughs> Other than Aina snickering at him for trying so hard, that is. 
Sure must be fun watching me break my back so your dad won't yell at us. <sighs> oh my god. With a long sigh, Aina sat up and cast a tired glance over the carpet. She reached out and grabbed a small shiny dagger. After checking its sharpness against her gloves, she began stabbing the air as possible customers approached the stall, attempting to showcase its intended use. Adder quickly put his hands over her shoulders, discreetly bringing her arms down. You know what? Nah, take that back. There ain't no deer in the world that works harder than Aina of the Test. There just Who's ain't. Aina? A hard worker like you deserves a good rest every once in a while, so uh, just let me take care of this, boss. He did his best attempt at a natural smile. Aina, who couldn't care less about any of this, simply shrugged and sat back, still wielding the knife. She let her hand fall on one of the stones that paved the bazaar and effortlessly tore it from the ground, deciding that it had served better as a sharpening tool. You do you. <laughs> Wait, let me just look at her! Look! It was best to leave the issue alone. Adder had figured out quite some time ago that Aina was a creature of habit, and her habits included steadfastly refusing to put any effort into anything she didn't care about. But it never really bothered him at all. There's something fascinating about watching her get completely absorbed by whatever task she had chosen to focus on, really. Adder never quite had that level of dedication to his craft, if he even had one. Let me move this. Take a sip of hot cocoa. She could hammer tirelessly at a single hunk of metal for hours at a time if the piece required so. All while judging Adder's every move with the same intensity. She was just as capable of sitting in a corner and glaring away the hours while she sat, sank, sank deep into her own imagination. That's why he immediately knew something was off when she turned her face away from the dull knife of her own accord. Huh? What's wrong, boss? Wait, is that... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me he's coming this way! Oh, my God, who is it? Oh! 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 Oh, Lord! Oh! Aina wasn't going to tell him either way, but... Oh, but coming this way he was, he being Adder's worst one-sided nightmare. The Almerhassen of Heirloom Souk tailed the treasurer, followed by his pale retinue. Okay, that, that was an encyclopedia entry. That was an encyclopedia entry. No, no encyclopedia entry. You're lying. I think you are. Adder didn't even have time to yelp before the merchant among merchants politely announced his presence with the ancient greeting, or N. To suck your mat, Miss Tess. Oh God. I'm aware of how hectic the stall must be today, so, so I won't keep you long. I simply realized what a rare occasion it is to see you out in a crowd, so I thought I would take a moment to come and pay my respects to you. I hope you'll find some solace seeing a familiar face among the hustle and bustle. Oh. <laughs> Aina looks angry! Aina's eyes turned sharply away from Tilid, closely accompanied by the tip of her knife. <coughs> oh, wow. Okay. The stag's head followed by the motion, or followed the motion, only to find the eerily immobile set of deer waiting by his side. Hmm. I understand the apprehension you feel towards my company, but I'm afraid these are the only escorts I can ever trust with my back anymore. It's a dangerous world out there for people like me. I guess. Hunka hunka. Got a purse, satchel. Speaking of which, where's your father? Your father? Has he considered my latest proposal? Proposal! Or will I have to send any more of my people his way? I, I, that or didn't miss the way Anna's fingers clenched around the dagger she was sharpening. I t <laughs> Distract him! <laughs> Holy whore! Check out that book's grapevine, boss! It's gotta be the biggest tree I've seen in my life from root to branch. Grapevine? Darn! That shrub's worth a fortune, I'm telling you. And trust me, 
I'm Chanchurian, born and raised. Chanchurian. I know a thing or two about giant trees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anna didn't bat an eye at the interruption, while Tilid didn't even seem to hear him. The bizarre staring contest remains strictly a two-person business. Hatter was never one to give up so easily, however. Yep, sure'd be nice if we could have a plant like that dragging our stuff around. <laughs> oh, it's a real shame the patron don't plan to bother showing up today. We could have tried to convince him together. Whoever buys that tree is going to show the world he's a deer with class. <laughs> ain't that right, ain't it? Adder didn't need. Adder needn't do anything more remarkable than put a hand on Anna's shoulder to make Tilid shoot a look in his direction at last. Ah! It was but a brief glance. A glance best reserved for a slug crawling up your leg. A glance so scalding that it could make weeds wilt and crumble to dust within seconds. The kind of glance that would normally precede the untimely death of an elongated yellow stack. As Adder's luck would have it, however, recognition set in the merchant's gaze just at the right moment. An unsettling half-smile formed in his face instead. Ah, uh, yes. I remember you now. Geoff's little paramour. <laughs> the oversized one-eyed fawn that wanted to be a knight. Well... One Durandun for a full set of armor was what you requested, if I'm not mistaken. Nope. I mean, yep. I mean, sir, I never dare say you're mistaken, but I doubly not dare say so when it comes to numbers. Imagine it. Poor farm boy could barely count trying to tell the tail it how money works. Darn. Just thinking about it cracks me up. <laughs> No, sir, I can't. I just can't believe for one moment the most famous loner, loner, loner. in all the world would be so kind to remember a dumb buck's dumb dreams, much less his ugly freaking mug. Hey. Of course. I never forget a face. She called no you handsome. How weathered or insignificant. That'd be remiss of me. Tillid nodded to himself thoughtfully, giving Adder a chance to discreetly crawl behind Aina. Despite the yellow stag's desperate inner pleas, Tillid's eyes soon shifted towards him again. Forgive my curiosity. I just can't help but wonder. How can a country boy with ambitions as great as yours go on living day after day, knowing he can't aspire to more than his deplorable life? Hey! Gioff can barely stay sober enough to feed himself, never mind someone twice his size. It must be exhausting, staying alive. It's thrilling! Oh, no, 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 not at all. We, we manage, sort of. Taylor's soft features drew closer to Adder, but he barely even noticed. His only eye remained glued to Taylor's bodyguards. It's not too late to consider the offer I God, made you hearts. back then. Let me put those deformed hands of yours hey. to better use. I could give you the armor and the money to pay for it now, if you come work for me in the sewers. The sewers? It won't be much worse than whatever the blind witch has you doing. Hey. That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Taylor, but uh, it's poor manners to consider job offers in front of your own boss. <laughs> you make a fair point. Perhaps once I've torn that red scab off our guild's back, then. What's the red scab? Aina. Oh! <gasps> oh Taylor finishes. Just follow him quickly! Go! We don't need you! <laughs> Taylor finishes farewell with a bow and thus left the moneylender at last, followed by the delayed rhythm of a Calcareous march. Calcareous? Cal. We're not. We're not. We're not saying it. Adder's body had somehow contorted into being nearly extinct. Wait. <laughs> Wait, I just, I just noticed <laughs> how he was behind her. Okay. Adder's, Adder's body had somehow contorted into being nearly indistinguishable from Aina's at this point. He needed a few more seconds to thaw out of that position. Divine beeswax, I'm crawling out of my skin here. <laughs> Who the hell you laughing at now, huh? That weirdo ain't no joke, you hear me? Last time I talked to him, it only took me shoving my hoof in my mouth half a second to swish, get a blade on my neck. And all I could see out of this eye was the creepy face of one of those golem th- Aina's ears perked up. 
though her gaze remained firmly locked on the blade. No, yeah, of course you'd find it funny, Mistress Miss Tess. Paying my respects sure is a fancy way of saying he got the hots for you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Adam barely avoided getting his liver punctured by an extremely flustered Ana. No way! No way! Oh! The hours passed by slowly and painfully, for they were completely ignored by any passerby. Or, well, actually, avoided rather than ignore. Oh my god, he had the hots for her! <laughs> it was no surprise. The merchant, Adder's patron, and his mute daughter were two of the most despised people in the city. Or was he joking? Wait, no, I'm just stupid. <laughs> well, in spite of the incredible variety of antiquities and smithery that the merchant had for sale, no one ever bought a single thing. And there were plenty of uh, reasons for that. Even Adder uh, had got some serious doubts about working for an old barhand man whose fur was redder than blood. And then a. Um, let me just. And an albino smith that insisted on dyeing her hair green. The fact that they worked independently from Heirloom's Traders Guild probably had something to do with it, too. It said new! No. Click. What was new? Is there new? Is there new? Oh! What? That was new! Almotassin. Almotassin, or Mostasaf, is an ancient word used to refer to the inspector of markets and workshops. This is a real concept! Spanish only! In any case, it was well after noon, and they hadn't done anything but sit around the whole day. <sighs> Adder pressed his lips together and began drumming his fingers against the floor. <sighs> <laughs> he looked askance at Aina, hoping his subtle call for attention had stirred her curiosity, but there was no answer. He'd have to be the one to actually break the silence as usual. So, uh, hey, Aina, I bet you're still wondering just what in the world can make a hard-working buck like this one get here so late this morning. <laughs> no, he's gonna brag about her. Aina stopped hitting the rock with a blade. She barely moved her eyes towards Adder. Well, buckle up, because there's a whole story there. <laughs> this got to stay between you and I, but, uh, this morning... Oh. Well, I guess you didn't really see. Well, he ran. He yeah. He he ran through. He he walled. I ran through a wall. <laughs> Good thing I have a thick skull, right? Hatter's attempt at starting some sort of uh, some sort of one-way conversation fell short. Yet another awkward silence ensued. He feared in those long seconds of quietness that his words hadn't been heard, or worse yet, that they were. But he was to be ignored for eternity. No, no, that couldn't be. He truly worried her too much. Of course, she'd be concerned. <laughs> what kind of idiot runs straight into a wall and then brags about it? No, don't make fun of my choice. <laughs> oh, I should have told her that he left to thinking a way to excuse himself for being such a dumb thing. No, you're lying. You're lying. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, what's that for? <clears throat> what? You get mad when I worry about you, and you get mad when you worry about me? That ain't fair, ma'am. I'm gonna get yeah. real mad at you next time you punch a wall. Real mad. Too mad! Please don't punch any more walls. Someone's gotta fix them holes for you. <laughs> Alright, boss. Wait, what was the boss's name? Was it... No, was it Steve? No. Was it Steve? No. Michael! <laughs> the best way to define Anna's smile at that precise moment would be terrifyingly mean. 
While her bad temper was known and feared among the other merchants, it was unusual for her to be so acidic, especially towards Adder. Our dear boy couldn't help but notice this change, and he wasn't going to keep it to himself, of course. You're acting real ugly, boss. Hey! The smile on her face vanished, replaced by a grimace. In response, you made her go back! <laughs> In response to this affirmation, Anna merely shifted her gaze back to the blade and resumed her task, pretending she hadn't heard him. But if Adder was known for one thing, it was his incessant need to stick his nose in everyone's business. Scared? For what? What's wrong? No. Scared? You scared or something, boss? A wrinkle formed over her nose as she focused on keeping calm. Adder quickly understood what was irking her. <laughs> now, now. I ain't dumb enough just yet to go asking you to explain. Just promise me that you're going to let me know if it's too much for you, okay? <laughs> One nod, ma'am. <laughs> she looked up, pointing at different parts of the crowd with her snout, and then she shrugged, trying to hide under the shade of their stall. Well, of course it's crowded. It's a friggin' fair. Just what in the name of Hatsa was the patron thinking leaving y'all alone in the stall? Ina only seemed to become even more conflicted as he said this. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean... Look, boss, your pa must have thought the same thing I think. That you're the strongest and the coolest and you can do this if you wanna. Yeah. And, and you ain't alone anyway. I smile. You no, know, ma'am. Patterson, son of Grafaz of the upper fields right here for you. All day, every day. Now, come on. How many hugs do the patroness need to feel better? Adder opened his arms wide, looking for a hug. Instead, he found the tip of the dagger inches away from his big snout. Well, someone don't like to hug in public. <laughs> I know that now. Got him? Yep. I swear, oh, I swear on my one good eye that I ain't gonna forget it for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, please, ma'am, let me live a little longer. Anna looked confused for a moment. She dropped the knife in a hurry as soon as she realized that she was still wielding it. Clearly flustered, she tried to sign some kind of apology, which in turn led Adder to apologize as well, which conversely made Aina attempt some sort of embrace as a compensation. <laughs> They're so good! So in the end, they just shook each other's arm awkwardly and called it a day. Oh, just kiss on me! Elagrab! Elagrab! <laughs> He's so big! He's so big! Adder and Anna immediately jumped away from each other, doing their worst attempt at looking half-professional. A thunderous laugh resonated over the ruckus of the bazaar. Illigrab? It's respectable Illigrab Buntalos to you, boy. Illigrab Buntalos? Who knew it she unlocked? Illigrab! Illigrab Buntalos, known as the Peacemaker, age 104. Species, Makadir. Birthplace, Heirloom. Illigrab is a deer. Tree, tree deer of jovial disposition and a voice powerful like no other. He's kind of a celebrity. The giant who is always patrolling around the city, ready to speak to nobles and peasants without any distinction. Everyone knows that he's tremendously important, but no one's really sure of what his actual job is. After all, Peacemaker is as ambiguous of a job description as it gets. He's an old friend of the merchant. Seems to have a soft spot for her Adder's antics. <gasps> He's so good! Everyone's so good. Everyone, everyone's, everyone's so, so good. Everyone's so good. Can we just like look at him? <gasps> oh! <laughs> the camera panned up for him. <laughs> But please, uh, don't hold back on my account. I'll just look the other way. What? The merchant! <gasps> and so appeared the man that was so red that it would seem that he'd stolen all the color his daughter was lacking. The merchant. <gasps> known as the merchant, or red. Age unknown, 
birthplace unknown, species Barhan. An angry old man won't stop yelling. He refuses to die in pyres organized by huge mops too. A nerve. Adder keeps calling him patron, though the forge where he works belongs ostensibly to Aina. Widely known as Se a Sefi, wholly deserved fame, though no one has to wonder whether there's truly a single drop of Hatsa left in his angry old bones. What? Wait, is he Anna's dad? I can't get over long hair, Anna! Okay, and anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! So if he's Barhan, then Anna. Gotta go. Patron! Gotta, gotta not question. Ah, so he gets the respectful treatment and I don't. I see how it is. What's that delicious doll cop doing to my daughter now? Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know. I don't They're know. just strengthening their ties of friendship. Ah, or is this a budding love? No! No! <laughs> no! Not at all, sir! The merchant shook his cane, hitting Illigrab's twiggy leg with a loud thunk. The tree man just wiggled his mustache in response. Whoa, 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 uh, Hold up, hold up. We weren't doing anything, patron. Yeah, they weren't doing anything. That's the problem, you cumbagrod! Oh! You light a sack! You! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. A coughing fit saved Adder from the most old-timely insults, which he could barely comprehend. Once he'd recovered, the merchant put his bearded face next to Adder's, resting the tip of his cane on Adder's chest. He opened his toothless mouth slowly, his breath reeking more like bleach than liquor. You haven't sold a single thing, have you? <laughs> oh, that's it! Oh, uh, well... Now, now, that's <laughs> hardly yelled. their fault, Red. Yeah! I'm sure this Yelp son was just frolicking with my daughter as usual! Hey! She's old enough to frolic as she pleases! <laughs> Stop! She hasn't even come of age yet! <gasps> of course she hasn't. There's no way for her to pass that right. Oh, the, the, the right. Of course there is! She just needs to open her mouth and stop being an idiot! Oh! How dare you! The only idiot here is the one talking, patron. Ain't is just mute. I wish that rub off on you! Oh, stop! And maybe you'd learn to keep your mouth shut when adults are talking! You're just poopy. But I did pass the coming of age right, sir! I got them adult horns and... <laughs> Shut up! Don't you have anything adult to say horns. about this, insolent child? Aina? She gone! She gone! She gone! She walked away while you two were arguing. Then why didn't you say so sooner, you overgrown sapling? <laughs> why would we interrupt you, Mr. Merchant? Hmm. Um, well, uh... She looked like she needed it. Yeah, she looked like this she needed it. This is all your fault and yours. <laughs> Why don't you sell him? He stabbed at her nose with the tip of his finger. What did I do? That stupid child's been acting up since you hey. first arrived. Don't blame the poor boy. Yeah. She's always had an attitude <laughs> and you know it. I don't care. You two'd better go bugger off somewhere oh. else. Or I swear to Arab that I'll hit you so hard that you'll be cropping at your teeth for a week! <laughs> You're crazy. I'll slow this down. Both Adder and Illigrab winced at that. Go he gun! <laughs> now hold up, what? Come on, Adder! Those <laughs> two clearly want some alone time. Oh. And he'll have plenty of that when I leave him tied to the pyre next time I find a mob outside the shop. Feel Grab took Adder by the cape and lifted him off the ground as they walked away. It 
didn't take Illigrab long to notice Adder's unusual reticence to speak. Please, don't let Red's words affect you. He's, uh, worse today. There's a storm coming from the west, and it's making us old people nervous. <laughs> no, the patron can preach and holler all he want. That don't bother me much. I mean, I don't cry anymore, at least. What he said to Aina, though? Now that's going two paces past the league too far. Mm-hmm. So what if she can't swear the oath thing? The three won't get mad at her for being mute. And anyway, Aina don't gotta pass no right. It ain't like she's getting married any day soon, right? Right! There, there. Got it all out of your system, boy. I hope he did. <sighs> you know what? All this stuff I'm saying means radish stew if I don't say it to her face. I gotta find her and make sure she's all right. Mm-hmm. Ilagrab didn't reply to that last affirmation. He placed Adder carefully on the ground and patted his cape to straighten it. Well, in that case, I have to go back to keeping watch on the fair. So this is where we say goodbye for today. Hey, I'll send someone to fetch you if I see her, okay? Okay. Adder nodded resolutely. They waved goodbye to each other. And then the book just stood there, wondering where to start looking when the bazaar was half a league from gate to gate. That's big. Assuming she was still in the bazaar at all. Finally! Yeah! I thought that fluffy bastard was never leaving! <laughs> yeah, fuck, he's so tiny! Walked into the scene with a huge smile as the giant disappeared into the distance. Afternoon, Mr. Bard. Oh, lad, what a face. Well, see, it's a long... Ah, uh, not a word. Thy means speaketh clearer than thy tongue doeth. <laughs> You're hungry. That's right. Uh, I ain't in the mood to... I am. Well, I am. <laughs> and I can't play a song when my stomach's growling a gazelle. Let's get some fried leaves. Sorry, Bart. I ain't got time for any of that. I gotta go look for Aina. She just ran away angry as all get out, and I know darn well if I don't go check up on her, no one's gonna... And I <sighs> thought my songs were monothematic. Oh, wow! <gasps> Gyoff picked the strings of his oud, ow, oud, his stringed instrument one by one, deep in thought, while Adder just paced around. Well, yeah, he's got to look for her anyway. I know just the place to look. Oh, really? Really, really, really? Gyoff expertly snuck through the crowds, moving with such ease that he seemed a little... Oh, that he seemed to be a little more than a shadow. Adder did his best to keep up with him, though that was hardly an easy task when he was one head taller than most other deer. The place Gyoff was looking for wasn't in the plaza itself, surrounded by stalls and all their merchandise, but rather on one of the many alleys that led to the bazaar. Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Oh! 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 Whoa! Oh! Whoa! 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 The crowd there was bustling with life as well, but not in whoa! But not in the same manner. They were all rowdy deer, pushing and cheering. A Carme alley. No. What? Why weren't you here earlier? Oh, you were. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Okay. Carme. Karnme is the name of the legendary deer practice of butting heads, a need that seems to run in their blood. Karnme tournaments are held for anything, from deciding a coming-of-age maiden's groom, uh, to setting minor disputes outside the courts, or even just for mere fun. Official Karnme has to be approved by the... P P P P Official Karnme has to be approved by the court, and while often a compliment to bigger events, some people attend said celebrations exclusively to watch duels. Some of the strongest deer became known kingdom-wide, earning fortune, fame, does, and sometimes even lordship thanks to their achievements in these battles. Fans of Karnme would get so impatient waiting between events that they'd often gather in narrow streets to watch other deer fight in unsanctioned duels leading to the birth of Karnme Alleys, some of the shadiest corners of the city. Rules! Oh, okay, 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 okay. I feel like we'll need to uh, know these. <clears throat> 
The rules of official Karnme are fairly simple, though they need not necessarily apply in Karnme alleys or more colloquial events. Okay, both deer must stay within the boundaries of the ring at all times. If either deer touches the ground with three limbs, they automatically lose. If one fighter manages to lock their horns around the others, they may not be separated while both fighters have their hooves on the ground. Ooh. Okay, 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 okay. The fighters may not remove the other's clothes or armor, or otherwise interfere with their belongings in a way that could disturb their opponent. I see. Okay. <laughs> Are we gonna fight? <laughs> Karnme alleys were very different from the official sort. While killing was still very much frowned upon, there was no chivalry, no one set of rules. There was no way of knowing if the horns you were being gored with were hygienic. There were punches and kicks and all sorts of cheats. It was chaos. And for that and several other reasons, Aina was a huge fan of unofficial Karnme. Sadly, as much as Adder jumped and pushed and yelled, she wasn't anywhere to be found. Alas, your fair maiden is in another alley. <laughs> Stop. In another castle. Adder cast a long glance over the imp improvised battlegrounds, attempting to find her one last time. That's too bad. One last time. Oh, no, kill me. Serious ass here. <gasps> That's too bad. <laughs> I need to take some serious ass here. Good thing she's not allowed to fight. Yeah. Hey, no way they're gonna let a doe. A golem, Adder. Golem. Hmm. Yoth had a very serious look in his direction. This wasn't the first time they'd had, his dis had this discussion, and it wouldn't be the last. How many times do I gotta tell you? Aina is not a golem, okay? She's a doe. It's just she's alba... 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 Bit of a weirdo. What? <laughs> weirdo. Right. Tell me, oh. Adder dearest, how many albino does? Can you name off the top of your head that can lift your heavy butt with just one hand? One! Aina! <laughs> Aina! Now let's oh! go! We gotta find her! <sighs> Why do I even bother? Look at her. Golem or not, cabbage she's head. just a little cabbage head hiding in the crowds of this enormous city. She's damn good at hiding. And do you know why people hide? Uh-huh. Well... Because they don't want to be found. By... By by specific people? That doesn't mean she wouldn't want Adder to find her. Geoff extended his arms towards him in a dramatic arm manner, marking how correct he was. You're not gonna find her. So why don't you go and use your thick skull for something useful? Like bringing us money so we can have dinner for once. Well, I guess I can see it. He is hungry. But still, he's a friend. He's a friend. Gaff pointed at the ring with his horns. Oh. That's... <laughs> oh! That's what he meant. Oh, that's what he meant. Oh, that's what he meant! <laughs> I thought he meant, like, go back to the bazaar and sell... Oh! Oh, that's what he meant! Ooh! Gaff pointed at the ring with his horns and Adder knew better than to insist. Ooh! With a heavy sigh, Adder nodded and began walking towards the ringmaster. Oh! Ah, wait, there's just one more thing. But... Your bag of coins. You wouldn't want to lose what little we have to the hands of, <laughs> say, some ill-intentioned crook, now would you? <laughs> oh, well. Better the evil you know, right? <laughs> yeah. Galf extended his hand a bit too keenly, waiting for Adder to find the purse he usually hid within his sash. What? Whoa, Bard. <laughs> you're... You're oh, really able to bust the No, guy. you're lying! You're lying! Don't tell me you lost it! <gasps> no when! Ah, uh, yeah. Alrighty then. Yeah, yeah, just don't! Just don't say anything! Just don't say anything! Just don't say anything! Ah! Gross! Y'all scrawny 
body travels like a branch with a snap off. Just go. I gotta save. I gotta save. No. I gotta save. I gotta save. I gotta go. All right. See that sweaty black head over there with the glistening fur and that charming smile? That's your foe. What? I'll go place my bet now. Are you feeling like a winner, ladder? <laughs> ladder? <laughs> oh, place your bet on the other one. <laughs> oh, hold up. You mean the guy with them sharpened horns? Place your bet on him. Please. Oh, darn, Bart. <laughs> your confidence in this poorly put together row is much appreciated, but as much as it hurts me, and it does, I think I'd rather go to bed hungry today. What? <laughs> what if it hits me in the face? I don't want to go from out of the one-eyed to out of the no-eyed! No -eyed. Then do enlighten me, my boy, on how in the name of the hat, sir, do you pretend to become a knight if you can't handle even a rack pointed at you? Well! No wonder you can't even catch a hint, yellow piece of mangy venison. You're just poopy. You're just hungry. People are hangry. People get hangry and... I know from personal experience that it gets really intense. Gyaf is just hangry. I understand. Oh. <sighs> Sorry about that. What are you mumbling there, Gyaf? My. I said I'm going to walk you through this. So, oh, help me three if you mess up. <laughs> Hey, let this die And a girl, you sure eat your veggies. But all the sticks on sticks. your forehead, I can't fool anyone. <laughs> if he's serious, this is going to be easier than I thought. Hmm. Wait, 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 there's a fight coming up? Yeah! Oh, you have to tell me everything about it. What kind of fighting style did Adder use? Was it Anther rattling? He was a rattler, right? Did he prefer grappling or thrusting? Or was he more of a brawler instead? Swish, swish, bam! Right in the... Wait, did they even have any hand wraps his size? Oh, <laughs> she's so good! <laughs> swish, swish, bam! Give me a moment. I think I have to sneeze. Words. I don't really know the rules of karma. I thought you just had to hit people until they fainted. Oh God, nothing I come up with is going to live up to our expectations. I can't deal with the pressure. <gasps> you, you said you knew the knight like the palm of your hand, didn't you? The new bearer of a tale of this magnitude should be able to pen a memorable fight scene all on their own. If that's the case, prove you're worthy of your name, Lynn. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> my moment to shine! Leave it to me! Yes, good! <laughs> I shall go and leave you to it so as to not influence you. Let's see. What would the knight do? Right! He needed a few tips first. So Gyaf took Adder aside and held him under his arm. <laughs> he said, Adder, my lad, tis a dangerous fight that awaits us. But if not in the strength of thy body, I believe it in the strength of thine heart. <laughs> That's what you're saying! saying is the greatest feat a fighter should at each moment strive for. She's so good at this! She's so good at this! <laughs> Oh wow, that's that's exactly what Gyaf would say. That is exactly. <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with this. Well, diggity yeehaw, ah! What a terrific, <laughs> mighty fine question that is. Adder nodded thoughtfully to himself and then continued, "I reckon that would be." <laughs> Honor, as expected of a knight, dearest friend, thou shalt be a rattler then. Ah, honorable style amongst honorable styles. The way our ancestors squareth, where two deer shalt proveth the might of their horns rather than that of their mind. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. hoy, bard! <laughs> no matter, mine horns are so teenly tiny! <laughs> You've smirked. This is where your strength lieth, mine otter. There is an advantage to short horns, thou see. No one shall be able to lock their horns around yours oh! to grapple thee to the ground. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Your advice is now run wise, Yoff. This is why I love you so daringly, dearly. <laughs> Adder, you beautiful 
little boar. Everyone will find out if thou keepest talking so loud. We oh. mustn't. You're lying! You're lying! Hold on. Oh, I had to pause. I had to pause the recording for a bit, but... <laughs> Let the whole world bask in the warmth of our passion. <laughs> oh, Adder. Smooch, smooch, smooch. <laughs> Scene going. Ah, it's going. It's going. <laughs> he really did that. He really did that. She really did that. She really did that. Yeah, yeah. That's how it went. IRL. <laughs> Adder found himself alone at last. His dearest friend lost to the blurry tides of people surrounding the ring. Veins were starting to pop in his eye, making it even harder to see anything except the stag waiting in front of him. The deer with the sharp horns smirked in his drunken gaze, clearly looking down on Adder. It wasn't the first time someone pitied him and lived to regret it, as the drunkard would soon learn. The ringmaster looked left and right, making sure that both fighters knew what they were about to get into. He lifted his hand carefully as he stepped back, and then, go! He screamed with a hand chop. Wait! Wait a, wait a schmeckin! Do I charge or do I wait? Well, I think, well, 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 maybe it's, it's a nice, well, maybe it'd be a nice, uh, nice contrast if I waited, you know? <laughs> just fight, just, you know, one out of two, baby. <laughs> the towering deer charged towards Adder like a runaway fur, horns lined and ready to slam into him with the full force of a Makadar stampede, but the road didn't move a single muscle. Adder merely waited, silencing all the voices that screamed at him to run and die. He didn't even assume the step rider or the step rider stance. He just waited, closing his eyes lest the sight of his incoming enemy would betray his nerve. And when the time was right, oh, wait! <laughs> grapple him! You gotta gr mm, grapple. We're waiting. <laughs> He realized that there was no such thing as the right time when one has absolutely no idea what to do next! Adder waited and waited, hoping that some divine inspiration would strike him. No! But the only thing that struck him was a brick wall as he flew all the way across the alley and right past any chance of ever amounting to anything in his life! No! I'm dead! No! <laughs> Oh, it's Lynn! This is so cute! Think it over. What? I'm glad I saved, I guess. Wait! <laughs> no! No, no, no! I'll think it over. After such. Oh! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah! Okay, this makes sense! So the narrator and Lynn are writing about what happened back then. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh, they're not writing about them, but like, oh, wait. Or she's writing about his experiences. Okay. Because this is some time in the future, because she's descendant, great, great, great. What? After such a... <gasps> she has black horns! Oh, I gotta go. After, su <laughs> After such a shameful defeat, the writer decided to take a page from Adder's book. Literally. She began writing these words as a means to stall her own anxiety as she tried to understand how she managed to dig herself into such a narrative hole. She had certainly made a mistake somewhere. It was obvious to her prodi prodigious mind that a boy so preoccupied with doing what was good and true and right would hardly be willing to do whatever it took to stand victorious and carve a space for himself in the annals of history. Our wonderful narrator started to realize that perhaps she had misunderstood something about Adder for she could picture no scenario where a well-meaning and upstanding street fighter could ever get past his first night in Slander District. <clears throat> On the Lynn Dibbley of Askadath, 
true descendant of the knight, decided to revisit her decision. Thinking more deeply about what kind of priorities her ancestor would have. As Amalyn Dibley of Azkadath, I think the true priority of her ancestor would have to be... <laughs> As I pause still, I think honor. I think honor. I think honor. Honor, as expected of a knight, dearest friend. <gasps> Thou shalt be a rattler then. Ah, honorable style amongst honorable styles. Okay, so Gyaf. Our ancestor squareth, where two deer shalt proveth the might of their horns rather than that of their mind. Wait. I didn't think that the honor one was the... was the horns. But hoy, bard, yelped at her. Mine horns are so teenly tiny. You've smirked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is where your strength lieth, mine otter. There is an advantage to oh, short wait. horns, she says see. This. No one shall we are be able to lock their horns around yours to grapple thee to yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, man. <laughs> We're starting a rom. Oh, uh, the uh, sag otter found himself alone. Yeah, we read this. We read this. It wasn't the first time someone pitied him and lived to regret it as the drunkard would soon learn. After I died. The ringmaster looked left and right and making sure that both fighters knew what they were about to get into. Go! Charge! Woo! This is no time to hesitate! Both the row and his opponent rushed towards each other head first, heeding the scream of an ancient instinct that boiled in their bloods. Every voice in the alley fell silent once the deer slammed into each other, horns singing a threatening melody as they rattled fiercely in a never-ending battle for dominance. <gasps> the tension could be cut with a knife as their foreheads pushed against each other, but Gyoff's advice proved unerring indeed. As much as he te as much as he tried, the bigger deer could not intertwine his antlers around Adder's short, straight ones. Yeah, now what? Uh, the answer was clear, of course! A barrage of swift punches to the other deer's face would have sent his brain bouncing all over his skull! It would have been an obvious choice to anyone with deer-sized hands, to any honorless ruffian! Refusing to even consider such lowly tactics, our hero decided to take the moral high ground. And the physical, too. <laughs> Tired of this pointless dance, the deer pushed Adder back with a swift head movement. Before Adder had a chance to react, his foe slammed his head just below the rose chest, knocking all the air out of him and lifting him right off the ground with ease! You're lying! You're lying! Adder flailed his one free arm and legs most valiantly, but there was little he could do in such a compromising position, worn out as he was after trying to uphold his honor as a brave warrior with such a direct approach. No, you're lying, you're lying, he's not. No! No! And crack! I could not tell if that was the sound of Adder's neck or Adder's teeth as his face hit the ground at full speed. But little did that matter, for nothing lay more than broken. Nothing lay more broken than his dreams. You did me! Lying! What, what if I think it over again? Ah. 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 I'm a link to believe. Well, I Vic Victor. Ah, so thou art a brawler, dearest friend. I have indeed taught it you well. <laughs> taught there it. is no honor in death. If thine horns will not aid you in battle, use those hands the gods gave you. Yeah, Follow yeah. Them to the Show ground. Hands. Thou shalt win this fight and prevail until the next. Mm -hmm. But hoy, bard. But hoy, bard. No matter, <laughs> mine hands are so bogglingly big. Yuff smirked. All the better to swat their faces away. If they tryeth to thrust <laughs> towards so thee with their large this. horns, thou shalt only need to slap them into the ground. Stand victorious over those who would hurt you, my natter. Yeah, yeah. And then they switched again with quietly. <laughs> ah, stop! <laughs> She's so... <laughs> Okay, I, sh I should have, oh man, why did I have 
to do this for a third time! <laughs> no! Okay. Wait! The towering deer charged towards Adder like a runaway fur! Horns lined and ready to slam into him with the full force of a Machadar stampede. But the road didn't move a single muscle. Adder merely waited, silencing all the voices that screamed at him to run and die. He didn't even assume the step rider dance. Stance! Stance! He just waited, closing his eyes lest the sight of his incoming enemy would betray his nerve. And when the time was right... <laughs> Grapple him! <laughs> Adder opened his arms wide, mentally prepared and ready for the incoming attack. Or so he thought! You're lying! The deer slammed his head into Adder's stomach, nearly sending him to the ground with a single well-placed blow! But when all seemed lost, Adder managed to stand his ground, rapidly holding onto his foe's horns! Adder's foe smirked. By the time our hero realized he had fallen into a trap, his whole body was hovering several arms over the ground! The carrot strikes back. What a foul move! He would have turned Adder into a strainer if the yellow deer had had a single bite's worth of meat in his body! Indeed, this Adder was nothing more than a hungry fawn who wanted nothing more than to go back home and hide. His life was a constant fight in to find mere scraps, and yet this boy would become one day the greatest knight that Akazor has ever known. But to reach the heights that awaited him, he had to live another day. Surviving isn't always the most honorable path, but it's the path we choose in this house. <gasps> At first, there was silence. Then roaring laughter and throats and jeers. The drunk deer needed a moment to realize that they were being directed at him. He reached down to pull up his pants as best as he could, hastily hurling Adder away after his dirty trick. Still holding his foe's belt, Adder fell on his massive hands, barely managing to keep his head over head over the ground to avoid such a shameful defeat after he'd already stooped so low. His foe was distracted, but no! Taunt! Can he kick him? Mm. Flying roundhouse kick! Emboldened by his spectacular success, Adder lowered his body over his hands like a spring and launched himself into a flying kick! and promptly fell on the ground face first, breaking his snout on the pavement because obviously this was not kind of story, Lynn. She's fine. Taught him. Well aware of the direness of his situation and the nullness of his pride, Adder decided that if he had nothing to lose anymore, he may as well go down in flames. Our protagonist called out to his opponent, loudly mocking him as he jumped from hand to hand, making a fool out of both. The drunk deer turned around, red in shame and fury. He swore, enraged, and charged towards Adder once more, overlooking the tiny little fact that his pants were still down. <laughs> oh, the whole alley watched in silence as Adder's foe fell obstreperously to the ground. Butt out and everything. Oh, God. Our protagonist stared blankly ahead as he got up, his expression as unreadable as that of the public. It was pretty clear that this was a victory of sorts. <clears throat> yeah, but no one was saying anything. After a few uncomfortable harumphs, the ringmaster scratched the back of his head, looked around vehemently, and then proceeded to kindly pull up the drunkard's pants before screaming, Down! And so, Adder emerged victorious, winning the fight on his own terms, questionable and messy as they may be, and living to see another day. Wait, so, so he, he wins? Of course he wins. He's the knight, you do. <laughs> ah, right. Nah, never mind then. Well done, Lynn. Oh, God. <laughs> ah! Pretty great. Yes. yes, you're so great! What's this torn page you're trying to hide behind your back? Wait, don't! Uh, hmm. Was that... Was that... <laughs> was that our two deaths? <laughs> so, anyway. Whoa, I can't believe it! Still alive and kicking!
chicken. <laughs> Come on, show me the money, Bard. I want to bite every single coin. <laughs> That's crazy. I completely forgot to place the. Bed. You're lying! Yeah! <laughs> no, no, no! Yeah, I've covered his face with his hands, making some sort of unintelligible noise that can only be described as the very sound of anguish. Hey, big guy! I want to learn some tips too. <laughs> I'll <gasps> buy you dinner. Really? Hey, now, sir. You really think you're gonna steal my manager away, so? Guff shut out his snout with one hand. My dear boy, you sure gave it all today, so why don't you go and enjoy what's left of the fair? <laughs> I have a gig in the tavern what? later. <laughs> Money, yes. I thought he don't was inviting at her! With that, Guff hurriedly shooed a very confused at her away. No! What an L! Our protagonist wandered back towards the increasingly empty and silent plaza, unsure of where he was headed next. Aina! His victory had been but a brief rush against mediocrity, and now that he was alone, his mind seeked the comfort of a familiar place, a seething pit in his chest. No, he had no business there! Heather had spent enough nights hungry and alone to learn to eat his emotions for dinner. But still, his stomach protested, demanding to know when their next real meal would arrive. <clears throat> he could only walk a little further to chase those thoughts away. No matter how resilient he was, he would eventually get tired and stagger his way back home, fall asleep in his little corner, dream a sleepless dream, and wake up to a drunk yaw crashing in. He'd head off to work and Anna would get him some food. That's right. He held no doubt in his heart that his boss would come back. What had he made such a fuss for? Aina had never missed a single day of work in the whole year he'd been working for her. And anyway, she was way stronger than him. What could he do? He had no reason to say grand words or worry like he did. He never had. The sparse groups of citizens and visitors all around him still celebrated this blessed day. Dances and melodies and patries adrifter from down yonder the steps would never be allowed to take part in. This was just another empty day in the life of Addersen, son of Grafaz. Huh? An abrupt lapse of lucidity made Adder turn his head away from his hooves at last. His ears perked up and his fur stood on end as he tried to make sense of the careless trip he'd just taken. The music was deafening all around him, the crowd untraversable. He didn't know how far he'd walked or how he'd managed to make some space for himself, but it was obvious now that he'd stumbled into some sort of performance. A stage where the whole city would be looking. What a dream. But a remote voice in the back of his thoughts told him that he didn't have time to find out what kind of show could attract such a crowd. That was not where he was supposed to be. Oh, 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 oh! He knew his gut hadn't been lying to him when he caught sight of a small, flickering light coming from a discreet tent around which the crowd seemed to be oddly absent. His eye wouldn't budge away from that curious flame shining in the dark. He sensed its offer, warm and loud. Adder didn't even consider for one second that he may have been too hungry to think straight. He ignored all the warnings come. Min sense would have taught him, and marched straight into the tent. Dusk was still a ways off, but it may have as well been midnight inside. Adder combed the darkness desperately, startled by the sudden change in illumination. Sweet, frightful clarity once more. What in, what in the name of the hot was I think? <laughs> no! No, I'm not Lynn, I'm not Lynn. <laughs> he pondered in breathless silence as his mind started conjuring bandits, assassins, and monsters, ready to tear his cape into pieces and fashion toothpicks out of his horns for having been so reckless. But he didn't get to fret long, as his fears were interrupted by the birth of a flame in the corner of his sight. Its flare grew with unmeasured force, blinding him for a moment. He struggled to regain his vision 
fearing those foes that only lived in his mind. Foes he wouldn't face today either. Bathing in the light of an orb that was filled with fire, shaded in ways that made no sense whatsoever, awaited a feminine silhouette. A very feminine silhouette. Took you <gasps> long enough. Hottie! Hottie, hottie! Nutty! Nanny, are you doing here? Oh, of course it was her. That's not a living. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Adder wished he'd found a bandit and found a bandit instead. At least he would have known where to look then. Oh, stop! He tried to fix his gaze on her eyes, shining above a thin pink veil that covered most of her face. But <laughs> that was in vain. The sequins that hung from her neck reflected the light all over the room, dragging Adder's attention right back to them and the scarf that covered the bare minimum. <laughs> let me stop, let me stop. <laughs> I have a thousand words to call the woman in front. Yeah, to call the woman in front of him. And none of them are good. So let's just say that what she was wearing would be inappropriate now. Let alone then. Honey. The ankles! Your ankles are showing! Don't just stand there. Take a seat. Oh, really, 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 really? I don't know. I've been sitting on my tail all day, and, and I got places to go, and I don't usually share tents with ladies. Oh! And... Yeah. Well, you weren't sitting on your tail. You won a fight! Judging by her glare, she wasn't going to take no as an answer. I mean, if you insist. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> It'd have been mighty ugly of me to reject an invitation. Yeah, it would. Adder did as asked and sat down on one of the many pillows laying around. <sighs> yeah, hoot, hoot, hoot. Pretending to be crazy, escaping the beg... Oh, escaping, begging the gods for mercy, breaking down and claiming that he wasn't, in fact, a horn eater, that this was just a mistake and he shouldn't be there. New, 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 new entry unlocked. Horn eater. Slang used to refer to a male deer who shows interest in another male deer, especially one with big horns. A male or female gazelle, since they're both horned. The word in its origin is a lewd reference to the posture necessary for two male stags to partake in such an act, and its meaning expanded to cover gazelles as well, as deer caravaneers extended the rumor that all gazelles were male in the first year of... And its meaning expanded to cover gazelles as well as male... Let me speak! <laughs> and its meaning expanded to cover gazelles, as well as deer caravaneers extended the rumor that all gazelles were male in the first years of contact due to their horns. While not illegal in any way, they face heavy social stigma. Roebucks have a fame for being interested in gazelles, so they are particularly vocal on their dislike for horn eaters. I see. I see. I see. Heartache District! What was that unlocked? Heartache District. Heartache District is where bucks who feel very lonely go to a go to feel a little less lonely. Look, I'm not gonna get into details, but the service there goes from extremely fancy company to I guess you don't mind being sad while you're naked. I see, I see, I see, I see. That's crazy. Okay, okay. Hatter's mind was bustling with ways to get out of that situation. So, of course, whenever his mind was busy, his mouth was free to speak as it pleased. Hi. <laughs> he spoke with a voice more akin to that of a fawn whose antlers are just beginning to sprout than that of a fully grown deer. I'm a deer, ha <laughs> ha, adder, I'm adder. Nice place, uh, well, I guess now is a better time to introduce yourself rather than later. I'm Anderson, son of Gerfath, <laughs> the buck who farms the highest hill of my village, Ravina Olis. So Ravina here Olis. and there, just about everywhere, folks know me as Adder, of the Upper Field. Of the Upper Field? 
It's the Z that's the TH. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Ah, I feel so silly. That's nice. Ain't it? <laughs> you better be, cause it's a lie, ma'am. They call me long what? neck short horns, <laughs> nor had her shovel hands, or sometimes even had her shoe face. Oh, Adder. A mocking chuckle stabbed Adder's heart. Feeling even more self-conscious than he thought he was capable of, he held onto his hooves and fixed his gaze on the ground, screaming inside as his face burned. So it wasn't the contusion after all, huh? You're just like that. I guess. Like what now? Funny. <laughs> she called him funny. Funny? The handsome. Me? <laughs> Not one bit, ma'am. I ain't got a funny bone in my body. Doc and I ain't never seen worse jokes than at her scenes. <laughs> Hold up. Didn't that sound like a poem just now? <laughs> He's a writer. He's coming for you, Lynn. Well, darn. A poem ain't nothing but a dull song, Mr. Bard always says so. <laughs> I'd hate to bore a fine lady such as yourself, so I better get... Bore me? <laughs> Please. With hands like those, you wouldn't look out of place in a traveling circus. Or in some lord's court, if you're any good at juggling. <laughs> oh, well, you know what they say about big hands. In fact, I know a certain gazelle in dire need of entertainment. What do you say? One word from Jacif, and you will be working in a palace tonight. Oh. Adder couldn't quite figure out if that was meant to be an insult or a compliment. But he was quick to decide that it was better to work for someone that didn't talk than for someone that talked about herself in third person. <laughs> I was just gonna say! <laughs> I think I'm gonna pass for now, but uh, I'll holler at you next time I'm fresh out of pride, ma'am. <laughs> A deep silence filled the tent. Matter cursed his luck and his good manners. He wanted to run away and hide, fearing that otherwise he'd commit a big mistake. The kind of mistake that would get him called a horn eater for the rest of his life. Oh, that mistake! Well, yeah, I. Mm, well, you got. Mm, uh, mm, that, mm. Well then, it was sure nice to see you again. But would you like to know your fortune? Actually, <laughs> you do fortunes. <laughs> Adder turned on his heel, desperate to find out if her offer was indeed true. There was nothing that betrayed a lie in her words, nor in her eyes. Whoa. You're one of those gazelle fortune tellers? For real? <laughs> the way his mouth. Let's just say they looked rather different back in Adder's town. Well, slap my head and call me silly. <laughs> I got you pegged all wrong, man. Oh, God, I'd love to hear it. You're mad. Oh, hold up. I lost my bag of coins. I ain't got a single door on me, so. Something flew into the ground, right besides Adder Foot! Adder's foot. My bag? You dropped it right after you crashed the first time. I meant to give it back, but since oh. you were so <laughs> bent on running through that wall. You, you didn't steal from it, did you? Steal what? It's just filled with rivets. Hey! Aha! That means you opened it! <laughs> Oh, stop! So much for wanting to see you again. <gasps> that was all. You can go now if you want. Wait, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the fortune, the fortune! A punch to the gut would have hurt Adder infinitely less than her words. Look what you did, Adder signed. What am I doing? What am I doing? He thought to himself, biting the inside of his cheek. No mere thief would have returned this bag. And as sad as that was, no other person had ever gone so far for him. <clears throat> and so he sat down once more, looking at the, oh, her face, looking at the finely yet scarcely dressed wo <laughs> Sorry, the woman in front of him with a mix of embarrassment, naivety, and just plain fear. I don't suppose you accept rivets as payment. <laughs> That would depend on what you're paying for. Say it's on the house! Say it's on the uh, house right now! You getting my fortune told? Yeah, yeah, yeah! <sighs> <laughs> what were you expecting? You offered it! Just keep them. Okay! Jasif rested her arms over the crystal orb, leaning closer to Adder. All right! Can you look into the ball thing and tell me how my ma and pa are doing? 
Did any of my little bros get married yet? Oh, his family. That's cute. But it's a reading glass, not a magic mirror. What? Right, right. How about oh, the weather? Right. Can you give them good harvests? Oh, take your prayers to the temple. <laughs> what do you, what do you want from him? Oh, well, darn, that won't do either. Darn. Alrighty then, how about me? What do you see in this buck's future? <laughs> your future? Why would you want to know anything about that? <laughs> what? Life would be boring if you knew what waits around every corner. I'll read your past and justify your present. Ah, okay. How useful. <laughs> but I already know those things. I don't. Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay, just see. Oh, everywhere. Okay. Her blue eyes spoke like an spoke <laughs> like an insinuating whisper. Her fingers walked over the. I don't. Uh, no, I, I'm just like reading. I'm looking at these too too long, too hard. Too. Her fingers walked over the cobblestone ground, headed towards Adder's own hands as her face got ever so close. For example, <laughs> we could talk about why you did what you did for me then. And so, uh, 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 figure out what I could do to return you're lying, the favor. You're lying. Now. You're lying. Uh, 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 uh. For example, oh, oh, I, uh, mm. the sequence that hung from her sash rang as they hit the ground, reminding him once more of her less than modest clothing. But no, she was no doe. Ah, God insists, ma'am, that you, you definitely got the wrong book. Uh, but even if. If I ever did anything nice for you in my life, a simple thanks is more than enough payment. Oh, maybe a few more rivets, if you know what I mean. You're <laughs> not Daru <dumb> or two. <laughs> I guess you could use a reminder, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was like, uh, you're that, you're that buck person you were that person from back then and he was like yeah, no, no. and then she's like yeah you were and he was like i don't know what you're talking about and i think she's gonna show him now the soothsayer made no attempt to conceal her disappointment much like no one ever has made any attempt to explain to her what coming on too strong means with apparent tedium she grabbed the crystal orb and put it right between her face and adders this time she had no more pretensions than merely watching him Oh fire, oh fire, tell me the secrets in the yada yada stuff in Bazaktet. <laughs> I don't feel like switching languages now. She's so talented. Okay, bilingual queen. Her complete lack of professionalism made Adder feel, for once, at ease. After all, what would he do if he was indeed in front of a Sephi, one of those heinous barhand wizards from far back in time? Cry? Beg? Try to escape? Wait, were those things he'd already thought of doing? Wait, oh, those were things he'd already thought of doing! Ha ha ha! As Adder was considering the subtle differences in the fears he felt when talking to a girl and imagining being burnt to a crisp by a witch, she watched him. And she kept watching. And then she watched some more. <laughs> the gazelle, gazelle, the gazelle lifted her head from behind the glass as she squinted her eyes into fine lines. Whatever she was looking for, she couldn't find. But she still ducked behind the orb once more, hoping to reach some kind of conclusion. Focused with such intensity that her eyebrows could have split her forehead in two, and she wouldn't have noticed. Jasif, Jasif pressed her mouth to one side, wiggled her nose, and opened her eyes so wide at him that Adder couldn't help but laugh. Shush! It's easier with two. <laughs> she mumbled the last part to herself, but Adder was sure that she'd said eyes. Oh, what's that? You ain't never done it with a one-eyed deer before? Hey, 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 hey! Adder pressed his lips together like he wanted to make them disappear. <laughs> Just he merely rose an eyebrow. His accidental innuendo made him begin shaking from more hooves once more. Uh, screw this. Ah! She pushed the orb away with an exasperated sigh. Before Adder knew what was going on, his face was in her hands and her face right in front of his. I need to find out if it was you after all. Stay still. 
<laughs> that drum beat in his ears. That was Adder's heartbeat as she stared at him so intently. There was a lump in his throat. He did his best not to tremble. His eyes, her eye, began feeling heavy, though he tried to hold her gaze. She was muttering something. The words about his past, but her voice became obscured by the noise of the bells, the crackling of the fire, the sound of her own eyelashes batting against each other. It's really too sodding late to be dealing with pests like you. Pests! And yet, here we are, wasting my time and yours. Well, <laughs> well, well, I guess he was all like, blah, blah, blah. Hey, what's that supposed to... Adder's complaint- Whoa! Adder's complaint vanished at spear point. <gasps> this is his memory. This is his memory. This is his past. This is- Two guards had replaced the gazelle. One old and complacent, and one young, eager, and inches away from stabbing his nose. Just who do you think you are? Who do you think I am? That was just Steve's voice. But as much as he tried to find her, Adder couldn't see her. In fact, he couldn't even move at all! What? Ugh, I won't fall for your bar and mind tricks, Gazelle. I don't care if you're just seed or just sued. Only nobles are allowed to walk the royal pathway. No exceptions! Baron? Was I saying it? Mm, I gotta go. Baron? Bar. Ma. Adder felt a lump in his throat as he unwillingly looked over at the railings that he was leaning against. I don't suppose you expect me to jump off the bridge. The younger guard opened his mouth to reply, but his partner cut in line. Can't you see that you're scaring her, you dimwit? Take a step back! What? But she's trespassing! The younger guard got smacked in the head for his efforts. Settle down, boy! You forgot to clean your ears this morning, or what? She said she's just see. Just see! This girl's far more than nobility, see? She's a queen. Queen? The queen of the desert, Rose, no less. Oh. Now that's what I call a fancy title. Is that an encyclopedia entry? A snake? A what? What is that? That's a guy. Oh, a short throwing spear. Call it whatever you please. It won't change the fact I am the one and only Jasif, and you are a deer with good taste. You must have heard my name in a hundred whispers. So, just imagine how terribly worried Miss Rochelle will be if her favorite girl doesn't make it home before dawn. Liar! There's no way the Desert Rose would have someone like you! Your kin shouldn't even be outside after curfew! Hey! <laughs> My kin? You mean gazelles who could buy your whole street? Yeah, tell him! So much for the open-minded youth. Uh, forgive this fool, your majesty. He's so uptight, I think he sat on his spear. <laughs> I'm sure you know his kin. A fawn like him wouldn't know royalty if it spat in his face. Hmm. He's got a point, though. Any gazelle could sneak up here and say she's a queen because she's the daughter of a goat with a bald spot on her head. You understand, right? We can't just take your word for it. Uh, nothing personal, of course. It's just common sense. So any gazelle could sneak up there and say she's a queen because she's the daughter of the goat with a bald spot on his head? Uh, I... 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 <laughs> Here's a thought. Why don't you sway us with a little dance? No, you're lying. I'm sure that Jasif would do anything for her subjects. Oh. What are you saying, you numbskull? We're on duty, and she's not even a. Ugh, three sake! We should just yeah, drag her to the dungeon and end this nonsense! Yeah, yeah, spare me the lecture, kid. Hey, do one of those bar and dance things. That'll no! shut him right up. No, you know, no, the no, with the no, fire no, and the no! And the... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Adder could feel the tip of his tongue scraping against his teeth, far smaller and more well aligned than he ever remembered them being. His patience was growing worryingly thin. I could dance for you, if you don't mind having an early cremation. Ta <laughs> ha! Wow! Huh? Was that a threat just now? Not at all. I'm just pointing out that I'm not dressed for the occasion. 
It would be a pity if your face was to catch fire and your skin burst into flames, turning your bones to charcoal inside your oh, you tell him. corpse while your ashes moldered up here. Just because I didn't have a fireproof shirt. <laughs> right. Well, it doesn't look like you have any other way to prove your words, your majesty. Oh, I suppose I don't. But I bet my good friend Illigrab could find a way to prove them for me. And walk you all the way across the city on the off chance we find that fidget arse of a tree hey, sitting at his desk. He's so good! <laughs> we don't get paid that much, little lady. A vicious, oh, pfft, a victorious smile crossed Adder's face. An opening, at last. Ah, uh, I understand now. A discount isn't even remotely enough to cover the entrance cost of the Desert Rose on a poor, hard-working guard's salary. Hmm. And that's not even adding the price of my performances. Ooh. The old guard's sh eyes shot open as he felt a few coins slipping into his hand. Don't worry. I'm sure there's some places down the street that are better suited to your taste. <gasps> oh, wow. He remained transfixed by the money a moment longer until something seemed to click in his head all of a sudden. Who do you take me for, Skip? We are honor-bound city guards. We won't get buffed by the likes of you. Ugh, what? Come on. This was more than enough last time. Why isn't it working now? Last time? The guards didn't react to that sentence at all. It was like they hadn't heard her when Joseph's voice sounded loud and clear in Adder's ears. The thought passed as soon as it came. The quick, anxious looks the old guard was directing at his partner became the new focus of Adder's attention. The moment they locked eyes, the answer he'd been looking for became evident. <laughs> of course. I should have noticed sooner. He's a new recruit, isn't he? Look at him. Oh. So eager and uptight. So focused on proving his worth to the captain. So predictable. You couldn't possibly trust someone like him with a bribe. He's too different from your old partner. Oh, but you couldn't trust that one either, could you? No, he knew too much. And he wasn't half as jaded as you are. His heart wasn't really in it. Aha, uh -huh, I see. You had a feeling he would end up going after you, so you sold him out first. That's why he's here. Oh, period! How? How did you... What? So she's telling the truth! You take bribes? Oh, young girl, give it to him! No, well, maybe if it's enough. I mean, come on! It's just a god's damned bridge. What's the matter if we let rich people in at this point? They're no different from nobles. But I swear, I'd never gotten money from this. No, I, I'd never even seen this. Gazelle? <laughs> the guard's face contorted into a deeply wrinkled scowl. He looked beyond confused, lost. The song was reaching its final notes. Aw, looks like your friend has a bad case of guilty conscience. That's okay. I'm no one to judge. Just let me go this time. I promise I'll be a good girl and head straight home. You won't even know I've been here. Adder started to walk, a little spring in his step, as something he barely recognizes his tail lagged behind him. He felt above the room, was completely drunk from his power trip, but he was far from safe still. A what? <laughs> a str Let me scoot in my chair! A strong hand clasped Adder's wrist tightly. This told him all he needed to know, that this this body wasn't his body, and this mind wasn't his mind. But who else could it have been? You are the Jessif, aren't you? You really could buy this old street if you wanted. It was you! It was you all along! What did you do to me? <laughs> I only gave you money. Truly! You gave me cursed money! Cursed! No, you cast a spell on me! No, you... Whatever is bad happening, whatever, whatever bad thing that's happening, he did that himself. He. What in the world are you rambling about now? You sound like a madman. Yeah, that's right. I have gone mad. It's not my fault. I'm not really a crook. 
She's a Sephi. She must have turned hey. me to do all those bad things. You. We're on you. to you, witch. Confess. You did all those bad things. What the hell? Every last fiber of her body was screaming at her to run. Jasif knew each and every corner of the royal pathway. She could have just hidden somewhere or outran two guards wearing heavy armor. That was the correct... Pfft, that was the correct option. It was obvious to her. But, but that was not the choice she made. She pulled close to him and moved a smirk towards his ear instead. I wouldn't waste any magic on you. Oh, fair, yeah! There wasn't any trace of fear in Jasif's mind as the guard grabbed her collar and pushed her against the railing. Not a speckle of resignation. It wasn't bravery, either. There was nothing but anticipation. Adder didn't know the name of the eerie warmth that was creeping onto her chest as she watched the tip of his spear turn towards him in slow motion. He'd never felt anything quite so peaceful and thrilling before. But to her... This lost battle seemed to be worth as much as a victory. After all, she had been playing with fire her whole life. Getting burnt was an eventuality she'd she'd been ready to accept for years. She was tired of making choices. Ow, oh, I pressed the scroll button. <laughs> Fractions of a second before the end of her life could be sentenced, a scream shook the night. Get your mitts off for you creep! <gasps> Adder! Ah! Oh, that's why she called him the chump, and he's so big and good. Everyone turned to look at the idiot yelling all the way down on the ground. You think you could just bother her last because she looks good enough for second helpings and then dessert? Well, you can't, all right? That's radish stew, and you'd make your mom cry if they knew. Let her go! <laughs> Adder had most certainly gone crazy. What the? Oh, get lost, Safer! This is official city business. It's got nothing to do with you. City business, my ass! You're holding a gal up against the wall. I ain't got nothing to do with it, but it's still got everything to do with me. If it's so official, I'm gonna scream till the whole city wakes up and sees this. Yeah! No, you're not! Do something, rookie! Give her to that drunkard! Mm. What, you want me to throw my spear at some poor horn eater now? <laughs> Who are you calling a horn eater? Uh, yeah, he's horn the horn there. eater! Adder, the pudgy version of Adder, that is, oh, wasn't concerned with matters such as his complete lack of grace, agility, or strength. Moved by his sense of justice, he began climbing the column that led to the royal pathway. Of course, he never made it. Hey! Are you still alive? Horn eater! <laughs> oh, poor kid. We can't just leave him to die all on his own. Oh! Guess he'll be jumping off the bridge yet, witch. Hey. Puzzling as the scene was, Jasif realized that she didn't have another second to lose. With the guard's hand still firmly wrapped around her collar and pushing her back, Jasif threw all her weight on one leg, using her tail as leverage to complete a practiced spin that ended with her knee sinking deep within the deer's legs. He immediately dropped to the ground, but it wasn't quite enough to knock him out. You little... That's enough. Let's go. <laughs> yes, let's go! But she kicked me! And she's a witch! Who wouldn't waste any she's... magic on you? I have no clue what this gazelle is or what she's not. But I can tell just fine what you are. I'm not leaving you another second with her! Get that old ass back to the barracks or I'm telling Illagrab what you just did! You got that right! Young guard. It was the older guard's turn to go pale. He lowered his helmet and began limping in the other direction. The younger guard, however, stood in front of her a moment longer. You! Go home, and don't let me catch you up here again. Jasif only allowed herself to breathe easy once again, once both guards had disappeared from sight. Pride filled her lungs faster than air. <sighs> Good riddance. She wasn't quite out of the woods yet, but she decided to savor this victory. A moment of peace, which Jasif took to look over the railings over one last time. 
Her wannabe savior now lay unconscious on the ground after hitting his head during the fall. And, in sp I'm gonna eat him. In spite of how miserable the scene was, Ado could feel a smile forming on his, her face. He finally understood that, crazy or not, he was seeing what she was seeing, the way she saw it. I'm eating ham and rice. <laughs> did I had, did I scare him good? Yes, you did, Adder. Yes, you did. Huh? You're awake? How in the name of oblivion can you be conscious after a fall like that? You must be at least five stories five! high. What are we even trying to? Uh, no, no. That doesn't matter now. Are you hurt? Should I call a doctor? Are you all right, ma'am? No. I mean, no, I'm not hurt. So, yes, th that was nothing. I'm fine. Thank you. And that's all this book needs to feel fit as a fiddle. What? No, I'm rather certain that's not how bodies work. <laughs> oh, no, 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 ma'am. You're thinking normal, dear. <laughs> I'm something else entirely. <laughs> Drunk. Drunk is what you must be. I sure hope not. It'd be a real shame if some barrel fever ruined the memory of your pretty face. Oh! It wouldn't make much of a difference either way. What was that, ma'am? Cad! You are Cad! Does this look like a good time to be flirting to you? <laughs> oh no! A distant yell bounced through the columns, nearly sending Jaseef's heart straight out of her chest. Don't know about flirting, but it sure looks like a good time to get walking. Then get up and walk! I can't just leave you to your fate now! No, you ain't. You ain't leaving no one, ma'am. Slum dwellers like me come a door a dozen. I'll just play dead for a while and see if I could spend the night in the morgue. <laughs> oh. More patrols were surely drawing closer by the minute, demanding she made a choice. Pronto. This doesn't end here, understood? I will make it up to you somehow, so don't you dare die until then. Promise you won't forget it. Whoa, wait, uh, hold up. Who am I supposed to look for? I don't even catch your... Neither, Ader. Neither? Mm. Neither had her understood why she chose to run then, but she ran. She ran before that pitiful buck lying on the ground could finish voicing his request, pretending she hadn't heard him. him. But the answer she didn't give to the question... Oh, oh my god, <laughs> why am I... But the answer she didn't give to the question he couldn't ask lingered a little longer in the space between old hopes and delusions. A sight that Adder found too engrossing to realize he was being left behind. Now, the gazelle was far out of his reach, and with every step, he felt her slipping away from his grasp a little further. He tried to keep up, but his legs wouldn't respond if it wasn't to her command. He tried to breathe, but he wasn't the master of his own lungs. His sight went dark and his ears turned deaf, a violent torrent of foreign thoughts clobbering his brain as his mind dissolved back into the nether. And as suddenly as he left, he found himself, one-eyed, famished, and back in the tent. Indeed, this had to be him. The same gazelle was still breathing over his snout, blue eyes fixed on him with the intensity of a burning sun. But who cares about having a half-naked beauty all over their body? Not at her anymore, no! A million questions filled his mind. Was that the real life? Was it just fantasy? <laughs> were, were any more of his memories slipping through the many cracks in his flogged skull? Or had starvation finally started to take a toll upon his heavy brain? Very brain. Very brain. As was usually the case, however, his lips refused to wait for a finished script. They raced past Adder's mind, offering an answer to the only question he had ever been asked. Sam? Oh! This word, so short and unassuming, seemed to waken something in a girl that Adder was almost too dazed to recognize. He couldn't tell yet why her ears perked up, or why his gaze was immediately drawn to her horns and the beautiful mass of red locks she was desperately pulling behind them. Disconcert washed away all conceit from her expression. It took away all the mesmerizing superiority from her eyes. 
Yes, she looked honestly and utterly tiny for a moment. Scared. Uh, where did you hear that? Where did I... Oh! Oh! Ma'am, you're okay! Ah, uh, ah... Uh... You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I heard you say it just now. Uh, but not now, now. It was a long time ago. I was under Hirup's statue. I mean, you were, but I was you and not me because I was trying to save you, but I fell on my face and those guards laughed at me and... Uh, just how the hell did I forget any of this? Why can't I remember? Yeah, why can't you remember? You're a gaze reader. Oh. Anger hit her like a wave as the shock disappeared. Why didn't you say so? Get away from me! Huh? The fire on the orb began flickering erratically, casting disturbing shadows all over the tent. Whoa, 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 what's going on? What in the name of Atsa did I do now? Was I supposed to say something to thank you? Is that the magic word? Do you seriously expect me to believe that you- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sip? It was Sip, wasn't it? Oh crap, I just went and cussed the lady out and Gazelle speak, didn't oh, I? cussed and Gazelle speak! She looked at him with skepticism. Her eyes squinted with barely concealed anger. She was clearly sizing him up. No. You really don't have a clue of what you just did, do you? Ma'am, if I ever got a clue in my life, it wasn't today. I'm just glad you're alright and that guard is in the dungeon or dead or something. Her expression relaxed just a little as she considered Adder's words. How her poor boy had more than enough trying to get some air into his lungs. Then you're telling me that you're a natural gaze reader? <laughs> Do you even understand what this means? <laughs> nah, ma'am! Do I have to say yes or no to get out of here alive? <laughs> a small chuckle erased all the tension from her face. Adder felt even more confused upon seeing this. <laughs> I was trying to read your gaze, but you read mine instead. It's called gaze because we invented it. So, it's true what they say about yellow deer. You must have Barhan blood. Oh! Adder would have normally disputed that last affirmation. Roe deer took pride in being real deer. No gazelle blood. At all. Nope. 100% deer deer with those that don't have horns. But this was clearly not the moment nor the company to say that. In Sirnar, please. <laughs> you read my mind. Say what? <laughs> yeah, say what? I think I'm not the funny one here, Missy. The gazelle seemed way too amused with this development. No, no. It makes so much sense. <laughs> I was wondering why you spent so much time looking at my face. <laughs> Hear me out. I'm sure you've always been really good at getting people's feelings. Hmm. But not smart enough to actually understand them. You're like some kind of savant hick. <laughs> That's hilarious. A wrinkle formed over Adder's snout. That was quite enough. My name is Adder, not Hick, Miss Sepp. Ah, uh, he's doing it now. Now why'd you go hide in such a cute little name, I wonder? Hey! Her face went back to being a little more than a pretension of grandeur, but she held the fire close to her. She didn't look all that different from a child hugging her blanket, soothed by the rhythm of the bells she wore. Adder couldn't help but notice that her alarming clothing didn't even bother him anymore. It's just a stupid nickname someone gave me. I hadn't heard it in years. They call me Jasif now. Jasif, as that disgusting guardwell said, that was no average name, and much less for a Barhan. Ain't that something like Queen and Gazelle speak? Bazaktet, and yes. That's a valid translation. Do you have any qualms about it? Adder did not have any qualms, per se, nor any remote idea what that word meant to begin with. But he certainly had opinions on her supposed royalty. <laughs> Do queens say I'm queen? No, my queen! No, my queen! 
no, no, no. <gasps> That's cool, Yasif. Did I say that right? I, I mean, if you need people calling you queen to be happy, uh... Her entry unlocked, Yasif. Oh! Oh! I love her. I love her sketches. Okay. Yasif, sup? Age, it's the braid, isn't it? Ugh, I knew it. Species Barra. Birthplace unknown. <gasps> this must be Sep. And then this must be Jasif. She calls herself Sep, but does not want others to call her Sep, and gets all bothered when they do, so I am 100% going to call her Sep here. <laughs> Sep talks, walks, and acts like there was a single star in the sky, and it was her. However, this saucy gazelle that cares so very little for others' personal space is, in reality, one part haughty enchantress and two parts bored child. Most people would at least be somewhat concerned about girls that go around calling themselves queen and saying they are old acquaintances, but then again, Adder is no one to talk. Barhan fortune teller was a very common euphemism back then, by the way. Oh. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. I don't need to be called anything to... She's so tall. Adder didn't mean anything with that, but he'd managed to say something rude all the same. Oh, really? <gasps> no, 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 no. She didn't finish the sentence deciding and said just look away. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Oh, no. Are you all right? She turned her face sharply towards his. There was something different in the way she was looking at him. Adder, right? That's me! He took a hand to his heart and bowed his head as an instinctive greeting, accidentally clashing his horns against hers. <laughs> he was surprised to find out that somehow that was a lot less gross than he thought it'd be. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Howdy, howdy, howdy bow. And accidentally clashed. How close did he? And he didn't know how to feel about this appreciation. Didn't you want to know your future? Then listen. What? Closely. I thought you could just justify his present. She put her mouth right next to his ear and whispered, "You're coming with me tonight." No! What? What? This is so fast. Where? <laughs> you really are one of a kind, CG Unlocked. Come to the Desert Rose when the lights are all out. Can I My room is on the first floor, but climbing there should be easier than climbing the bridge at the very least. <laughs> Wait, climb? Room? There you go saying weird stuff again. I'm not a thief, and I'm not a hoarding. <laughs> What'd you do to him? Without previous warning, the fire and the orb extinguished, leaving the room in total darkness. Adder didn't even have time to feel alarmed. He felt her hands on the back of his head, and next he knew her lips were over his! <laughs> his mind shut up completely! No! What about Kyoff? What about Kyoff? <laughs> sorry, 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 <clears throat> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> mm -hmm. See you later. Are you what? I couldn't even stop to consider how I felt about that before the kiss was over. With his mind still in a daze, he got up and turned around to leave. For a few moments, he stood frozen outside the tent, merely appreciating the cool dusk breeze on his fur. By the time his thoughts began making any sense, he was already running home at full speed, crying disconsolately about the realization that he was, in fact, a horn eater. Okay, I know I played the demo, but that was six months ago and I forgot most of the things that- <laughs> Woo! 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 Wow! Wow! Let's take a break here! I want to review Horns Become Her! I want to review what you've written so far! What? You don't trust my writing skills? <laughs> Lynn! Lynn! What? You don't trust my oh, writing skills? I hit the scurly thing. No, obviously. Hmm, feels good to be loved. <laughs> it really does. So, Adder was.
was a gaze reader, just <gasps> like me. You're a gaze reader too! Oh! Yes. And he really was into stuff in the end, which explains a few things. Spoilers! Okay. Of you. If Adder and Geoff had had an unlikely yet <laughs> alluring, brief, intense romantic involvement, how would it have been called? Peter? Adif? Keter and Adif! That wasn't me screenshotting it. Pandering! Stop! Well, what it? But then I guess the only question I've got left is, is this going anywhere at all? Huh? What, what do you mean? You've learned a lot about your beloved knight already, haven't you? Yeah, sure. Don't take me wrong. I like your take on the story so far. I just can't figure out how any of this leads to him becoming a knight, much less the knight. <laughs> Patience, little Nashgab. All shall be revealed. <laughs> like your major crush on Seth? Hey! Wha what? You can put all the words you want in Adder's mouth. I know an obsession when I see one. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, he has a crush on Seth. <gasps> go, go, get your eyes checked then. I'm gonna go back and count how many times you've mentioned her butt. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, true! Derriere! Butt? I think like at least three times. I think at least thrice. I, her, that's it. You're not hearing another word about her. What? Boo! This is a biased recount. I'm calling Radish Stew on this. I never claim to be objective, you tiny insurgent. It's my story and I'll share it however I see fit. Unbelievable. You are silencing the very truth you champion. Whatever shall become of outer story if you bear Rivas of the booty? <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly, truly! There are more characters in the story, you know. Or were you in love with them, too? <laughs> oh, 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 okay, I'll take that as yes! <laughs> They're blushing! Oh, I, I... You know, looking back on it, there is someone I should have loved more. Honestly, she was a bit rough around the edges, and she wasn't the easiest kid to be around, but the reward for preserving by her side, persevering by her side, was the unwaveringly, was the unwavering loyalty of an iron-hearted friend. Sounds like a nice girl. Oh, no, she was horrible and I hate her. What? <laughs> Chapter two! Oh, 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 this is where we stop. This is there we this is where we stop. Oh, period. How do I just You didn't see that. You didn't see that. Yes, I will overwrite my site my save. My save and I will go to the menu and I will press yes. Ah! 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 That was great. That was good. That was good! Oh my god. Oh, I can't wait to play the other chapters. Ah! Okay. Um. Well, I don't. I. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> so if if you're still like watching and stuff thank you <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope you don't mind i hope you i hope you don't mind my incessant screaming <laughs> but i'm so excited i'm so happy that i could play this and i'm hyped and happy that i could share this with you <laughs> um see you in the next chapter <laughs>